Good morning from Sarajevo, Bosnia. Um, this is the room that I'm having here. Um, this morning I'm gonna leave to the Brovnik, but this is what I got. And it's also the souvenirs that I got. I got this very big card. So it's uh, not very big, but it's good. This is what the rest looks like. Very decent in the car. That's it. <laughs> so we're back on the road again, going to Dubrovnik. But first, we're gonna go to Mostar. So that's uh, like two hour drive, and from there to Dubrovnik is also like two, two and a half hours. So my pit stop is gonna be Mostar, quickly have a look around, and then continue to Dubrovnik to meet my cousin and his girlfriend. So let's have a, see, let's have a look and, and see how it goes. But I have com I'm confident that the road is going to be going to be fine. Uh, the the way here was also okay, so I hope it will be the same. After driving a scenic route, I finally arrived in Mostar. And Mostar is named after the bridge keepers, Mostari, who in medieval times guarded the old bridge called Stari Most. Even though Mostar existed since prehistoric times, not much has been documented about it. Only after the 1500s, under Ottoman rule, it started to grow and be developed and documented. And it's under their rule that the famous stone bridge was built in the 16th century. And it's considered a perfect example of Ottoman architecture. And they even built the first Serbian church, surprisingly. In 1878 it was taken over by the Austro-Hungarians and helped to bring East and West together. They also invested a lot in the infrastructure, like the municipality building. After World War II, it developed into a touristic location after a 10-year preservation plan of the old town. They even earned an achievement for this in 1986. But then, like in every other place in Bosnia, the same story happened. The Bosnian War. But before we jump into that story, let's first enjoy this beautiful location and have a look at the bridge. The bridge is 24 meters high and 30 meters long, with two defense towers on both ends. The construction is still a bit of a mystery, like how the stones got there, or how the wooden support structure survived for 9 years. One thing that wasn't a mystery, but mentioned in memoirs, was the following. The architect responsible for building the bridge was working under quite some stress, because he was working under the threat of death if it would fail. And in fact, on the day the wooden support structure was removed, he was planning his funeral. This gives a whole new meaning to working under pressure. You wouldn't notice on first glance, but the current bridge is actually a replica, because the original bridge was destroyed by Croatian forces during the Bosnian War. This mosque is connected to the bustling Market Street, but here in the courtyard you don't really notice that so much. You have a couple of shops where you can buy some souvenirs if you want, but the overall atmosphere is quite serene. It's accessible for the Muslims, but also for the tourists, but you have to keep in mind, during the praying times you cannot enter as a tourist. Korski Mehmed Pasha Mosque was built in 1618 by the Ottomans. It's made from the same stone as the bridge and it's 28 meters high. 
and you have to do 78 steps to get up the top. Just like many other Islamic structures in Bosnia, it was targeted by other parties to try to destroy the Bosnian culture. The mosque was damaged by Croatian forces. And when you finally reach the top, watch out for your head, because I hit mine. But maybe that is just a Dutch problem, who knows. Anyway, you will be greeted with this amazing view of the river and the overall city. And the color of this river is just amazingly blue. You will see this blue everywhere you go driving through Bosnia. It's amazing. And if you look closely, you can see the history of the place through its architecture. You will see different kinds of styles all around the city. And you can really see why people want to live here. It's absolutely beautiful. This is the old bazaar which is connected to the previously mentioned mosque and it stems from the 16th century and it used to be the business world of the entire region with up to 500 workshops they still do copper works and carpets for example there are also woodworking shops and painting shops so you could get a unique souvenir but you have to pay attention for fakes This was the first higher education school in Mostar and it is accommodating to every ethnic group or religion in the city. And unfortunately also in Mostar you cannot avoid the war damage. It's even worse than in Sarajevo in my opinion. So to keep a long story short, in 1992 the Yugoslav army besieged many cities in Bosnia. Mostar being one of them. Initially, Croats and Bosniaks worked together to push out the Yugoslav army. They succeeded, but after their mutual enemy was gone, they suddenly started to look at each other and tensions rose. Until it exploded in 1993 and the war between Croats and Bosniaks started. Before the war, Mostar roughly contained one third Bosniak, one third Croat and the rest being Serbs and other groups. The Serbs mostly left after their defeat. So in the end, the city was divided between West being Croat and East being Bosniak. It's one of the most infamous buildings from the war in Mostar, Sniper Tower. It looks nothing like the original purpose, a bank. But during the war, it became very important for the Croatians because it was a great vantage point of the overall area. Therefore it became very popular with snipers because they could target most of Mostar. Now it's completely empty and bricked up and full of graffiti artworks and it stands as a reminder of the war. But if you really want you can enter through a backside and enter the building. After the war it cost up to 15 million dollars to repair the historical center. So right now I'm on my way to Dubrovnik, I'm almost there, half an hour away. Uh, it was a scenic road for sure in Bosnia, Bosnia is very very beautiful. Uh, so let's see where the border is, actually I think the border is really at the very last moment, I think I'm almost there maybe. Um, yeah I took a different route apparently, I guess the scenic route. So it was a lot of uh, mountains and hills but it's very nice to see and very green. Also a lot of wildfires by the way, there were like a lot of um, uh, bushfire areas and uh, so a lot of uh, burned, uh, well, trees basically. Not really forest, but like scrubs. So also this area has been affected apparently. So I wonder if the border is around here somewhere, I have no clue where I am. But I guess it's gonna be soon. So we will see. I don't know where the hell am I going, but this is where it sends me. So it's kind of interesting. Bloody hell. Where the hell am I? Holy shit. This is one of those classical moments where if you trust your navigation blindly, you will end up on those weird roads. 
The whole route was completely fine, no problems. And suddenly I entered this dirt road. Oh, had no idea for how long it was going to be. And I had a rental car. And then suddenly it was over and I was near the border. Very strange. Good morning from Dubrovnik in Croatia. So yesterday after five hour drive, I arrived in Dubrovnik to meet my cousin. Uh, halfway I went to Mostar and now I'm here. So today I'm actually leaving again. <laughs> we're just gonna go into the city quickly in the morning. It's uh, eight o'clock and we're gonna have a look around and then I have to drop them off at the airport and I'm gonna go to Montenegro to my tenth country and basically the last one for this, for this trip. Uh, and I'm gonna stay there for um, basically three days. So let's have a look around. Um, this is my, was my stay for tonight. Not so impressive, but it's uh, it's good enough. There's a little balcony, little view. It's nice anyway. City is like 15 minutes walking. This is like a giant kiwi tree. This entire thing is a kiwi tree basically. It's insane. And there's a lemon tree, people are cultivating all, all, all kinds of stuff over here, it's really interesting. So I'm gonna go head down, meet my cousin, and then we're gonna have a look around. One of the amazing things about travel are moments like these. My cousin and his girlfriend were traveling the entire coast of Croatia in lightning speed, as they said themselves. I was traveling the Balkans, so we were looking for maybe to meet up somewhere. And until the very last moment, it wasn't clear if it was actually going to happen. But here it happened. <laughs> oh, good? Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Dubrovnik, originally known as Ragusa, is a semi-exclave of Croatia, separated by a tiny piece of Bosnia. The reason why is actually quite interesting. So Ragusa was a free city-state for a long time and actually had good relations with the Ottomans. But after the great earthquake, they were vulnerable to the Venetian Empire. Therefore, they sold a little piece of land to the Ottoman Empire so they had a buffer zone between them and the Venetians. And that's why we still have this little piece of Bosnia that is connected to the sea. So as mentioned, it mostly ruled itself from the 14th century until the 19th century as the Republic of Ragusa. The Republic was actually quite unique because it was a true phallusocracy. It was also allied with Ancona in Italy against the Republic of Venice. And it wasn't under Ottoman rule, but had to pay a tribute to them at least. They actually had quite modern rules and regulations, like quarantine rules, they had medical services, like the first pharmacy from 1317, which still stands today, a house for the poor called the Alms House, plus an orphanage, and a water supply system. But more impressively, slavery was abolished in 1418. Imagine that, this was even before the Americas were discovered. So it wouldn't surprise you to know that their biggest value was liberty. It was also involved in trade with the revolutionaries in the United States, in fact. Their flag on their boats were white with the words libertas. Considering that they were mostly a merchant-oriented country, Ragusa had some minor colonies, like in India or the Americas. Albeit mostly for trade, of course. And because of all of this trade, they became very wealthy. But what goes up must come down. And this was also the case for Ragusa. Because in 1667, there was a massive earthquake which almost destroyed the entire city. After this, they became very vulnerable, but still managed to survive. 
until Napoleon's forces came in 1806. From here on, things went downhill. From French occupation to Austro-Hungarians to this Yugoslav kingdom, the Nazi occupation and finally communist Yugoslavia, of which the dissolution ended up in a civil war. So my impression of the city is as follows. Yes, it can be busy. Yes, there are a lot of tourists. I think mostly now because of Game of Thrones, which I never saw. But if you go down the little street in the little town, you can find peace and quiet. People living their normal lives. Actual people live there, remember. And it gives you more of an authentic feel. So you have to look for it, but it's possible to find. Hello there. Hey. <laughs> yeah, the lemon incident. This needs some explanation. So after walking around Dubrovnik the entire day, we finished up with a nighttime stroll through the little streets of the city. The little streets are actually quite serene and very quiet compared to the main street. And that's when I found this perfect spot for a drone shot, which you will see later. This took roughly 5 minutes and my drone is small and very silent. And then after teasing my cousin and his girlfriend for 2 seconds, this man threw a lemon at my drone. Initially, I didn't notice anything because I wasn't looking at the building. So I just felt something fly by my arm and I saw the lemon on the ground and I heard a man yelling from a window. But then later, going through the footage, I saw that I accidentally captured that moment. It sounded like an American tourist, but I wasn't sure. But anyway, we packed up the drone and we left immediately. But not before I threw the lemon back right through his window. You know, return to sending. Anyway, this was the only shot I took at that spot and that was his entire problem apparently. In the end, this just turned into a funny anecdote to tell at birthdays. But yeah, I want to thank my cousin and his girlfriend for a great day in Dubrovnik. They are great adventurers and uh, maybe next time we can do it again. Hey, hello! Hi there! We are at the end of the video again and it's time for the maggot and postcard part. And we start off with the Mostar postcard because the only card that didn't arrive was the Sarajevo one. So we immediately jump to Mostar. So, well, mm. let's have a look at that one first. Hi right there, yes. yes. Beautiful bridge, beautiful postcard too. But here we go, here we go. All right. Hi, Dad. Today I'm en route to Dobrovnik to meet up with the city in the halfway, halfway cafe. I made a stop in Mostar to see the bridge, the famous bridge. Uh, and it's small and pit picturesque here, very touristy. You even see more than more war damage th the here. The buildings are totally destroyed. Some buildings are totally destroyed and full of holes. More obvious than I in in uh, Sarajevo, sorry. Sarajevo. Got to go now. Got to meet Sydney and Sumeru. Bye. Yeah. So it was a quick stopover, but actually it is doable. You can do it just in a quick stopover because it's indeed not very big, as you could see. And the most, the biggest attraction, of course, is this bridge, and that is um, walkable within uh, 15 minutes, basically. So yeah, if you want to do a quick jump. To Mostar, it's definitely possible. But don't jump off the bridge. Well, but... you actually can jump off the bridge. That's uh, that's one of the main sports there. That oh, people yeah. jump off the bridge. Driving off the bridge, yes. yeah. And then, uh, well, the souvenirs that I got also there. Well, this is one of the uh, sort of magnets, supposed to be a painting of the Mostar Bridge. It's not actually painted, I think, but uh, yeah, it's nice anyway. It's sort of like a little painting. So yeah. Is that a magnet? Yeah, it's a magnet. It's made of it's made of wood. So I thought it was. Uh, a, bit, a little bit unique, mm. so that's yeah, nice. Yeah. Then also in Sarajevo, going back to Sarajevo, 
I uh, got this magnet, which is handmade. So the copper is uh, very well done over there and they m almost make everything themselves. So also this one. So yeah, this is the main square. And uh, it's also on a wooden back. So also pretty nice and yeah. uh, unique also. Yeah. It's all handmade. And I also bought uh, this <laughs> rather funny souvenir. Sort of a tank made of, made of bullet uh, and, and shells, shells basically. Yeah, yeah. It was interesting because I also got another thing, which was a pen. In this, it was in a big shell. I think maybe it's kind of like a like an, an AA shell, maybe or something, or something like that. It was a big, a big uh, shell, but that was not allowed to take on the airplane. Mm. I was like, well, I'm gonna see what happens. And they removed it because it was it was a pen, but of course it was one big bullet, basically with carvings and stuff. Mm. But this one I was allowed to take, so yeah, yeah it's yeah. an ironic. Uh, Mem memorial uh, <laughs> souvenir sort of and a bit bigger this time because I had a little bit more room I also took this one the poster so I'm gonna totally block out my dad for one second uh, yeah it's a poster of course Soviet poster uh, and yeah I like the art art uh, the architecture of those things of course not the message itself but uh, yeah it's interesting and what it says I translated it of course it means uh, fulfilling his vow, which means him, um, we hand over to the people, to the party, and Tito uh, hand over the road. So this is supposed to be a highway, and they, well, with all kind of bombastic signatures and stuff like that, they um, they give it to him and the people and the party. Whereas here we just open it and we don't tell about anybody about it, and they used to make a big show out of it, I guess. So yeah, it's a poster about the highway. Pretty mm. ironic. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I um, was a little bit at the end of my travels. So I was thinking, okay, I have a little bit of room now maybe for an additional souvenir here and there. So that's why I uh, took those few extra things. Uh, next to that, I also went to Dubrovnik as you could see. And it was also a quick trip, so I sent two postcards. Originally, I tried to send this one. This one is made of beeswax. So yeah, it is... Uh, you, you, yeah, you can feel it also and you can see it. And it's supposed to look old, which is a nice touch. Mm -hmm. I tried to write on it, as you could see. Didn't work. Uh, so that's why I bought a second card, just to be able to write something. So I bought this just for the writing thing. So I'm gonna read this one. Um, so it goes as follows. You can you can show this. Mm. So yeah, hi dad. I tried to write on the other card, mm. but it didn't work. So that's why I sent two. So it was a quick visit, but worth it. It's touristy for sure, but it's for good reasons. It's beautiful and charming. It's small but nice, with little streets everywhere. The sea is nice and blue with a lot of fish. You are surrounded by hills, which basically is Bosnia, because it's very close. The border is 15 minutes away. The city is full of history of empires, and that's why it's, it's a fort also. Mm. It's all, the overall area is beautiful. And then I wrote, P.S. The other card is made of beeswax. Mm. So yeah, also quite unique. Yeah. Um, oh. So you got if you hold them and a light to this, it'll just melt away. That's the idea. I'm not gonna try it, but yeah, that is uh, <laughs> maybe it's just plastic and we're just fooled. It's possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But maybe it's half half. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. It's a touristic place anyway. <laughs> and there I found supposedly also a unique uh, magnet, which is also hand painted. It was from a shop where a lady worked and she made everything herself. It looked authentic because she had all kinds of painting things around her and equipment and everything was full of paint in her hands and everything. So it uh, it looked like it was done by her. So I assume it is. Mm. So yeah, it's mm. a little bit um, yeah. an artistic way of Dubrovnik. Yeah, if it's real paint, you can see that you should be able to see the brush strokes in the light because you can't see that. Yeah. Unless it's uh, watercolor. 
I mean, yeah, the the, the back of it is a little bit. Uh, it's not really paper, but it's something else. But yeah, it looks authentic mm. because the, the, it shines a bit different. But yeah, even the idea that it is authentic is is already enough mm. for now. Yeah, it looks it looks nice too. Yeah, nice, nice color uh, ar- arrangement. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, that was it for for this episode. The next episode will be the last one, and also, um, yeah, a little bit a different one, because as you probably know by now, I had a lot of camera problems, which I will, um, yeah, go in deeper the next time. But yeah, at least this was it for now. Uh, thank you for watching, and then we see you next time. That's it. See you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Ciao.